Hi, and this is part four of topic three on material structures in MATE 210. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the other features of unit cells that are important, such as interstitial, interstitial sites and grain boundaries. Interstitial sites are openings in the crystal unit cell where an atom cannot, be, cannot occupy unless it's sufficiently small. So for example, in the simple cubic unit cell, which is drawn here on the left, you notice there's going to be a hole in the dead center of the unit cell. This is called a cubic interstitial site, and it occurs at one-half, one-half, one-half coordinate position from the origin. In theory, we could take a very small atom and place it inside that interstitial site. And remember, the atomic packing factor for the simple cubic cell is quite small, so this is actually a fairly large site and could probably host a, a pretty big atom. There are other kinds of interstitial sites, such as tetrahedral sites and octahedral sites. Tetrahedral sites are surrounded by four other atoms. So, for example, this tetrahedral site is surrounded by this atom, this atom, this one, and this atom over here. Or an octahedral site, which is surrounded by eight atoms. One, two, three, four, this one, and the one over here. I'm sorry, it's surrounded by eight sides and six atoms. I misspoke. So if we look at BCC, there are octahedral sites on the faces and tetrahedral sites just in the interior of the unit cell. For an FCC crystal structure, there are tetrahedral sites just in the interior of the unit cell, but also octahedral sites at every edge and also in the body center of the unit cell. I'm not that concerned that you know where the interstitial sites are. All I really care about is that you know that there are such a thing as interstitial sites and there's small gaps in the crystal where we could place really small atoms if we wanted to and we're going to do just that. Remember, interstitial sites are normally not occupied and the lowest energy state is for the atom not to be there. But sometimes we have mistakes in the crystal and we can force an atom into one of those positions. The other feature of unit cells that I'd like to talk about are grain boundaries. Imagine if we had took a unit cell and we kept stacking it up over and over and over again to make a crystal. If we did that through the entire object, we would have what's called a single crystal. And we can make single crystals of materials. In fact, we do this for jet turbine blades and also for the sing silicon single crystals that are used in computer chips. But most materials, in fact almost all materials, are formed in what are called polycrystalline materials, meaning they have more than one crystal. Well, what happens when two crystals run into each other? So let's say, for example, we have a crystal over here on the right and another crystal over here on the left. Let's just pretend for the sake of argument that they each have the simple cubic unit cell. Notice that the crystal on the right has a different orientation than the crystal on the left. Where they intersect, we have a region of disorder this area of disorder where the atoms don't line up is called the grain boundary. So it's important to recognize that a grain boundary exists not like it's actually there on like a line on the map, but it's there because the different orientations of the crystal and structures that don't line up. And when you have a region in between, and the region in between the different orientations is called the grain boundary. This is a picture of an actual metal where we've used acid to etch the surface and reveal the grain boundaries on the material surface. So each of these little blobs represents a single crystal where all the atoms are lined up with the same orientation. And where it intersects a different colored blob, that's a grain boundary between two different crystals of different orientations. We'll talk more about other types of crystal structures for polymers and ceramics.